fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One Silver, let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Dan Reed, teenage nephew of the Lone Ranger, rode his horse Victor along the trail near the town of Kenton. The trail followed the top of a ridge overlooking a valley. Suddenly, Dan's attention was drawn to a fast-riding horseman in the valley. Then shots rang out. Oh, oh Victor, hold oh, oh, oh. Two men are chasing that rider and firing at him. Come on, Victor! Dan started down the slope into the valley. As he rode, he drew the gun the Lone Ranger had allowed him to use for practice and fired into the air. The pursuing men turned and raced up the opposite slope as the solitary rider fell from his saddle. Dan holstered his gun and went to help the fallen man. Oh, oh, Victor, hold easy, quite steady. Are you badly wounded? Got got hit in the shoulder. If, If you hadn't come along... I'll bandage the wound. Then take you to my friends nearby. They'll take care of you. Dan gave first aid, then helped the wounded young man to his horse. A short time later, they arrived at the Lone Ranger's camp. Oh, oh Victor, oh, oh boy. Oh, Easy, oh, boy. Steady, fella. Dan, who's with you? He seems to be hurt. He is, sir. Two men were shooting at him. He's wounded in the shoulder. We'll lift him from the saddle tunnel. Uh, uh, keep us out. Mask, man. Boy said he was bringing me to friends. We I... are friends. Don't worry about the mask. We're not outlaws. First, we'll rebandage your wound, then you tell us what this is all about. The wounded man was soon made comfortable on a bed of pine boughs. He looked gratefully at his three benefactors, then spoke. Uh, boy, save my life. You men have been mighty kind. I reckon it's safe to tell you everything. Whatever you tell us, we'll go no further, if that's what you wish. Well, m- my name is Roy Barnett. I joined the Texas Rangers a year ago, and recently was assigned to get the goods on a gang that's been operating in this territory. Well? I came down this way, posed as a drifter, and... Hung around the cafes in nearby towns. You finally met one of the outlaws? Yeah. I became friendly with him. Before long, he took me to meet the gang. A leader, a heavy-set German named Karl Lubeck. Well, he doesn't trust anybody. Watch me closely. Lubeck? Toto, he's a man we've been searching for. Mm, him plenty mean feller. Well, earlier today, I was at the hideout. There are two cabins. I was in one of them with one of the gang. The rest of them were with Lubeck and the other man I was with went outside just as another member of the gang arrived from town. I was about to go out when I heard him talk. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Uh, uh, hi, Slinky. Where's everybody? In the boss's cabin. What's up? Plenty. 
I found out this morning that the man I brought to join the gang is the son of the United States Marshal. Oh, holy mackerel. We know him only as Roy. I heard he's Roy Barnett from the paper. I knew it'd be only a matter of minutes before the whole gang came looking for me, so I got my horse and left. I reckon Lubeck sent two of the men to gun me. Can you tell us the location of that hideout? Yeah, but it won't do any good. Lubeck was getting ready to move the gang anyway. Uh, storm coming, Kimisabi. Rain wash away tracks before we get to hideout. And we're not able to follow gang. The storm will complicate matters. Regardless of that, we'll get directions from you, Roy. After the storm is over, Todd and I'll go to that old hideout. Dan will stay with you until we return. Right now, we'll find shelter before the rain starts. After the storm, the Lone Ranger and Toto went to search for the gang. Meanwhile, the two gunmen who had wounded Roy joined Lubeck and the others at the new hideout. Oh, hold, hold, hold. Steady there, boy. This place all right? Storm slowed you up, hmm? Yeah. You uh, silenced the spy, Roy Barnett? We followed him and started throwing lead. I saw him fall from the saddle just before we left. You didn't make certain he's dead? So we didn't have a chance. Some hombre on a white horse came riding down the slope shooting as he rode. I figured he must have others with him, so we beat it. Uh, you fools! If Roy Barnett lives long enough to talk, what it if means... he does? Nobody can find this new hideout. Even if they go to the old place, the heavy rains washed away the gang's tracks. Yeah, that's true, but he learned a lot about us while he was with the gang. And I'll not be satisfied until I'm sure he's dead. Well, Slinky and I couldn't have taken the chance to hang around and find out, Carl. Seems right. That hombre and the big white horse meant business. And like we said, he might have had others following him. I want you to go back and try to find out what happened to Roy. But, Carl, the rain washed out old tracks. We couldn't trail him or anybody else. He may still be alive. Go anyway. Find out what you can. Uh, all right, if you say so. Come on, let's go, Slinky. Yeah. We'll see you all later. All right. When the two gunmen arrived at the place where Roy Barnett had fallen from his horse, they could find no trace of him. Oh, there, oh, 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 there. Uh, what do you think, Slinky? You believe he's still alive? Maybe. But I don't know how we could find out. The hombre on the white horse came down that slope over yonder. Must have been riding the ridge trail. Yeah, that's right. Maybe if we go up there and search along that trail, we'll hit on something. It's worth a try anyway. Yeah. Carl will be sore if we don't come back with definite information. Let's go. Uh, come on, get, get up, up there. Get up. At the camp, Dan Reed watched over the wounded man. Roy dozed from time to time while Dan sat on a nearby stump, ready to attend to the stranger's needs. The camp was located in a wooded grove on the side of a hill. From where Dan sat, he could see part of the trail as it circled the hill below. Suddenly, he stood up looking sharply as he caught sight of two horsemen moving along the lower trail. Two men riding a roan and a palomino. They looked like the two gunmen who wounded Roy. Then Dan realized that two horsemen might be searching for the wounded man. He knew if they located the camp, he and Roy, who was in a weakened condition, would be no match for them. Dan hurried to Roy's side. Roy, Roy. Huh? Well, what's the matter? The two men who chased you. I'm sure they're coming up the trail. Well, hand me my gun. If they find... No use, Roy. We'd be no match for them. I'll help you into the tall brush and hide you there. I'll hide your horse back among the trees. We'll have to hurry. What about you? They see this camp. They look around. Uh, they'll follow my horse's I'll tracks. mount my horse and lead those two men away from here. I think they'll be sure to chase after me, and I know my horse can lose them. It's risky. Now I'll try to keep out of gun range. Hurry, they'll be coming along near here. As soon as you're out of sight, I'll leave. Come on. Quickly, Dan helped Roy to a safe hiding place. Then he led Roy's horse back among the trees out of sight. As the boy ran toward his horse, Victor, he could hear the approaching hoofbeats of the outlaw's horses, though they were still out of sight around the bend. This boy's letting go. Come on, Victor. Dan was already racing along the trail ahead of them when the two gunmen rounded the curve. Oh, 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 oh. Slinky, look, ahead of us, sir. The same hombre on the white horse that came down the slope after us. Let's cut him. No, no, wait. Maybe we can catch up to him. Try to take him alive and then take him to Carl at the hideout. Carl will force him to tell what happened to Roy Barnett. Come on, get up there. Get up. Get up. Get up. 
Dan's horse, Victor, like the great stallion, Silver, could outdistance most any other horse. And soon, Dan was leaving his pursuers far behind. Come on, Victor! The boy planned to outrun the gunman, cover his trail, then circle back to the camp where he had left Roy Barnett. But Sam and Slinky realized they couldn't catch up with Dan, so they turned off the trail and rode straight down the steep slope to intercept him. Later, as Dan approached some large boulders along the trail near the foot of the hill, he was taken by surprise. Stop where you are and reach, mister. Ho, ho, Victor, ho, ho, ho. Get it up there. Ho, there, ho, yes, ho, ho, ho. This is the same hombre, Sam. I couldn't mistake that horse. Yeah. Well, I didn't expect him to be so young. He's plenty husky. Better take his gun while I keep him covered. Right. <laughs> I got it. Now, speak up, you. Where's the hombre you found on the trail in the valley a while ago? What hombre? Don't act like you can't tell me what I mean. He rode down the slope into the valley when we were chasing an old good snooper. We know because we couldn't miss seeing this white stallion. There are other white stallions. Stop stalling. Tell us what we want to know or... Hold it, Slinky. That can wait. Well, you're going to give us straight answers or not? I don't know what you're talking about. Answer him, you young maverick. I don't have to take that. That's enough. One more move and I'll plug you, youngster. <laughs> you deserve that, Slinky. He knocked you right out of the saddle. <laughs> I reckon he is kind of husky for his age. He moved in on you so fast, it didn't know what happened for a minute. I ought to put a bullet in him right now for that. Don't be a fool. We'll take him to Carl. Maybe after he's through, he'll turn this young fellow over to you so you can teach him a lesson in fist fighting. <laughs> you know, you know, come to think of it, I might bet on a boy. Ah, shut up. He's hit the... If I do get the chance, I'll beat him till he grovels at my feet. Maybe. Well, all right. Let's head for the hideout. Right ahead of us, you, and remember, we both have guns ready to use. Get moving. Do it. Come on, get, get up. up there. Get up. Later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at their camp and pulled to a stop. Kim Sabi, Dan not here, and may not see wounded man. That's strange. I wonder. I'm over here. He's back in the tall brush. Come on, Tonto. A moment later, the masked man and Indian bent over Roy and heard what had taken place. When Roy finished, the Lone Ranger spoke. Tonto, Dan took a great risk. Those men got close enough for their bullets to reach him. Uh, we pick up Dan's trail. Go find him. Yes, and if anything has happened to him, I'll find Carl Lubeck and his government and make them wish they'd never been born. Come on, Toto. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue. Making sure Roy was well hidden and had a gun to defend himself if necessary, the Lone Ranger and Tonto mounted Silver and Scout and set out to find Dan. Easy, silly big fella. Come on, Silver! Get him up, Scout! The new hideout location Carl had selected was an unusual one. Underneath an overhanging bluff along a river, there was a wide ledge reached on either side by two narrow paths. 
Some time before, a prospector had built a cabin on the ledge, close to the cliff wall, and had dug into the cliff in search of gold. About 20 feet below the ledge, the river formed deep rapids between the cliffs. Dan Reed was taken down one of the steep, narrow paths to the door of the cabin. Sam Slinky, who is this you bring here? This is the fellow who rode down the slope toward us firing his gun. He must know about Roy Barnett. You mean you two men were run off by this youth? He may be young, but he's tough, Carl. <laughs> Slinky found that out when he hit him to make him talk. Slinky ended up lying on the ground. Yeah, and I haven't forgotten it. When you're through with him, Carl, I want you to turn him over to me. It should be a good fight, Carl. That will come later. What is your name? Dan Reed. Where is Roy Barnett, the man you must have found on the trail? What happened to him? I don't know what you're talking about. You see that, Carl? We know he's the one we saw, but he won't tell anything. Make him talk, Carl. Yeah, don't let him hold out on you. Reed, it does you no good to say nothing. Speak up. Tell what you know about Roy Barnett. There's nothing to tell. Uh, we're going to have another squall, looks like. Yes, that's good for covering tracks in case this fellow has friends who may want to find him. We'll go inside. Keep him covered, Sam. Hey, let's go. Sit down, Reed. All right. Now talk. Do you hear? Talk! I'm not telling you anything. Time to the chair until the storm is over. Then, if he hasn't decided to talk, we'll take him outside and turn him over to Slinky. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had followed Dan's tracks to the boulders, where he had been surprised by the two crooks. They started to trail the three from there when the storm broke and they had to seek shelter. Meantime, back at the camp, Roy Barnett was concerned when the storm broke. He realized the Lone Ranger and Tonto would lose Dan's trail because of the rain. And since Dan hadn't returned as he planned to do, Roy was certain Lubeck's men had caught him. No use staying here. I'm wet already. Feel able to ride now. Get my horse, then go to town, tell the sheriff what happened. After the storm had passed, Carl again tried to question Dan Reed. Then, impatient with the youth's attitude, he turned to the men who were watching. Oh, he's a young fool. Untie him and take him outside. Come here, you. Slinky, we will have your chance now to use your fists on him. And I'll make a good job of it. The outlaws, ready for some entertainment, quickly untied Dan Reed and led him outside. A few moments later, they had formed a circle around Dan and Slinky. All right, you. This time, you're going to know what it's like to get some real punches. I'm ready. Dan stood a moment waiting. He felt somewhat nervous facing the full-grown outlaw, but he noticed that Slinky showed indications of dissipation and decided to concentrate his blows on the outlaw's bulging stomach instead of reaching for his chin. In the seemingly uneven encounter, Dan was relying on the training and knowledge of fist fighting he had learned from the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Slinky suddenly moved in fast. This'll show you. I want to be shown. Watch him, Slinky. He can hit hard. Not hard enough. There. Dan was light on his feet and moved about in such a way that his opponent had difficulty in hitting him. For a few moments, it seemed that Dan might be beaten down by sheer force and weight. But he noticed that Slinky was breathing with difficulty. Dan's well-placed blows to the midriff were telling on the outlaw. I'll break your neck. Not if I can help it. The men grew tensely silent as the fight continued. In spite of themselves, they felt a certain amount of admiration for the youth, who seemed about to get the best of a man twice his age and tougher than most. Finally, Slinky moved in, determined to beat Dan down with a furious onslaught. I'll finish this. I'll kill you. I don't think so. By Jiminy. He beats Slinky. Some fighting. Get Slinky get out of my sight. Go on inside. First, I'll take Reed's gun from you. Give it to me. He made a fool of you, and he's made a fool of me, too. Men, tie Reed's hands and feet and then throw him into the rapids. The men, still impressed with Dan's fighting, hesitated a moment. That moment was long enough for Dan. The circle had parted, and Dan saw that he was near the rim of the ledge. With a sudden and unexpected movement, he ran and hey, jumped into the, the river below. Out of my way. Give me a chance to shoot that tit. No use. He jumped. Think you hit him, Carl? I don't know. I couldn't see him. He hasn't come up. Ah, uh, he's a fool. He can't survive the rapids. Let's forget him and go inside. 
After Dan hit the swirling water, he swam below the surface, moving with the current. He was an expert swimmer, but tired after the fight, he realized he had to battle for his life in the water. Alternating swimming and floating, he finally managed to reach a point beyond the canyon. I'm beyond the cliffs now. We'll have to make it to shore somehow. The exertion of the long swim after the fight with Slinky overtaxed Dan's strength to the point of exhaustion. The shore seemed far away, and he was relieved to see a rock between him and the shoreline. Dan made his way to the rock and clung to it, gasping for breath. This rock, if I can hold on to it long enough to get rested, maybe I can make it to the riverbank. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had written the trails searching for Dan and the outlaws. As they rode along a bluff near the river, the Lone Ranger said, Tonto, it's terrible to think Dan needs us and we can't get to him. That rain had held off a little longer. Mm, Kimisabi, we know tracks started from boulders up along the river trail. Maybe if we keep looking, we find hideout. Well, if we don't, I... Oh, wait a minute, Tonto. Hold, Silver. Hold. Hold, Silver. Hold. Uh, why we stop, Kimisabi? I thought I saw something move on that rock in the river. I'll use my field glasses. Oh, wait a second. Here. Tonto, a man is clinging to that rock. We'll try to get to him. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. A short time later, the two men reached the riverbank opposite the rock. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, steady, big fella. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, me see him. Uh, maybe him not able to hang on long. Look closely, Tonto. That's Dan. I'll get him. Hastily discarding his jacket, gun belt, and boots, the Lone Ranger plunged into the water. Hold on, Dan. I'll get you. The masked man cut through the water with the speed and form of an expert swimmer. Within minutes, he approached the rock. Slip into the water, Dan. Place your hand on my shoulder, and I'll get you ashore. Yes, sir. Now, take it easy, Dan. We'll make it all right. You'll soon be safe. Soon, Dan and the Lone Ranger waded ashore, and the boy sank down wearily to rest. <sighs> ah, it good thing, Lone Ranger. See on rock, Dan. As soon as you're rested, we want to know how you got there, Dan. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute or two, sir. It's too bad you got all wet coming out to the rock. Well, that doesn't matter as long as you're safe. Oh, but you really didn't have to swim out. I could have made it to shore after I rested a little. <laughs> well, Dan, grow up fast. Him get so, him not need much help anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I the joke's on me. I thought I was practically saving his life and soaked all my clothes doing it. Now he tells me he could have made it alone. Well, anyhow, I sure was glad to see you. <laughs> Thanks, Dan, I'm sure you were. Now, tell us what happened to you. Briefly, Dan told of his adventure with the outlaws and of his fight and escape. He finished by saying... They still have Victor, sir. And the gun you let me use for target practice. The gun my father owned. Do you think you can lead us to the path and approach the hideout? Yes, sir. But there are eight outlaws. You and Tano couldn't go against them alone. We'll take you back to the camp, Dan. You ride Roy's horse to town to get the sheriff. Then we'll move in on Lubeck and his gang. Dan rode on Silver with the Lone Ranger. And with Tonto, they started back to camp. They had gone a short distance along the trail when they met Roy with the sheriff and the posse. Led by Dan, the horsemen started for the hideout to surprise the outlaws. Later, at the hideout, Carl and his men were in the cabin planning a holdup. Guards were posted at both paths leading down to the ledge, so they felt secure. We'll rob the bank in town, then leave this territory tonight. We'll head for Carl, some place... Look out the window. Men coming down the path at the south end. What? Some are coming down the other path, too. They must have overpowered the two guards. We'll be trapped in here. Get your guns and start shooting. <laughs> Careless men moved toward the cabin from either end, using boulders on the ledge for protection and firing continuously. The outlaws realized they were trapped and fought desperately, but it was a losing battle, and before long they were subdued. Several of them had been wounded, and the rest threw out their guns, then came out with hands high to face the sheriff and posse. Well, we finally got him. Sheriff, that one is Carl Lubeck. I recognize him. I've seen handbills on him. Hey, Carl. Look, there's a young fella. I thought he was done for. Oh, he has a charmed life. All this has come about because of him. That masked man must have had something to do with it. I remember hearing about a masked hombre who helps the law. Well, you're looking at him right now. Sheriff, we'll get Dan's horse and get him leave. I'm sure you and your men can handle things right, right. mister. Adios, Sheriff. Adios, everyone. Adios. Adios. All this happened because of a youth who knows too much. I reckon he knows so much because the masked man's his friend and taught him plenty. Who is the masked man? Well, that question shows you have a lot to learn, Lubeck. That mask, hombre, is none other than the Lone Ranger.
This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Thank <laughs> you.